Jason Sudeikis is a busy guy these days. A few weeks ago, he welcomed his second child, a little girl named Daisy, with fiance Olivia Wilde. Now he's starring in the off-Broadway adaptation of Dead Poet Society, playing the role of John Keating, made famous, of course, by Robin Williams in the movie. This is a bold move. Congratulations. Good morning. Thank you. Thank I don't you. know whether it's song about the new baby or the, or the role. Yeah, yeah, both are brave endeavors, yes. Easy decision or tough decision to bring this iconic movie story right. and this iconic role played by a guy like Robin Williams to the stage? Uh, easy decision with the elements in the story. Easy in the sense like it's an amazing character. I think it's a... Uh, tremendous story, still still relevant, still prescient in, in the same ways as it is like, you know, uh, kind of timeless. But then the actual endeavor of playing a part so captured so beautifully and so iconically by like a, an absolute icon, a hero of me personally, was one that I had to be very thoughtful with. You say still relevant, so needed right now. This 100%. is unequivocally an inspirational story. And after yes. what we've just lived through for the last year, year and a half, yeah. this really is going to go well with audiences. I, I mean, I hope so. It's been really fun. We're, we're in previews now. We've been, we've, I think we've done 10 shows now. And uh, yeah, it still hits people. I mean, I, I had, you know, I had friends of mine who had never seen the film read it just to sort of be like, okay, does this is the story and everybody, uh, you know, that read it, you know, got teary-eyed by the end of the play. Just to make sure that there, maybe there are some people who don't know yeah. the story. It's a story of a group of teenage boys. They're mm -hmm. at a, a prestigious prep school mm -hmm. and one of their teachers is a guy named John Keating yeah. who inspires them. Tell me about him. Yeah, well, basically John Keating is, uh, yeah, he's a, a rabble-rouser. He's an alum of the school, so he's gone through the system. He was a Rhodes Scholar. He went to Oxford, uh, but he has a very different way of teaching, trying to encourage the kids to think for themselves, think outside the box, and not just, you know, follow the uh, the path that the school has intended for them. I've probably seen the movie 20 times, yeah. and every time I listen to some of the speeches that Keating gives in in that movie, I think back to people in my life, and, and yeah. who, cre who was the John Keating character in my life? Did you have one? I had a couple. Very lucky that way. I think that's the, the one of the biggest things that I've benefited from is the, the accidental or, or actual mentoring that I received. But yeah, I had a great high school teacher named Sally Shipley. Uh, I had amazing directors and teachers in my Chicago Second City experience, people like Mick Napier, Joe Bill, like uh, and you, Tina Fey over, you know, just across the street here was a big uh, mentor for me in my early days of writing at SNL. Lauren, certainly. It's, it's usually someone that sees something in you, that sees something in someone before they see it themselves. Yeah. And, and, yeah, I mean, parents can be that way, older brothers and sisters. You can, it doesn't have to be familial. It can be in your cul-de-sac. It can be in, the, you know, whatever carpool you're in, the person that, you know, plays Led Zeppelin or, like, <laughs> the Beastie Boys for you the first time. You're like, what is this? Or, like, you know, we get to do it for Otis now with the Beatles. It's kind of like, you know, as long as, as long as you can keep, keep encouraging people to sort of look, look beyond what they're... Uh, you know, their own baggage can sort of get in the way of them seeing. It's, it's a nice gesture to offer. So being on the stage every night is going to take you away from bath time for a while. That's true. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I, I, I shower now. No, I don't mean you. Oh, me. Oh, no, sorry. No, okay. No, um. no, talking about the baby. <laughs> it's all right. It, yeah. It's all right. Again, I think, you know, I've got, I've got six little boys to watch over when I'm away from him now yeah. in, my, in my class. So, uh, yeah, he'll, he'll have to deal with it. Any sense uh, of just wishing you were at SNL this year with this kind of with the riches they are devouring every week in this political season yeah um, no it's been fun to watch though they've been doing an amazing job I mean you know if, if, if it came down that they needed to do a you know a, a Trump Biden you know you know boxing match I, yeah. I, I was a phone call <laughs> away, a I'm a text away. Yeah, exactly I get yeah. Romney in there too so uh, yeah but it's it you know it's great to just to see what what they're doing and to view it as like a guy that you know played the game for a while and is retired and then can sort of be like, oh, I know what they're feeling. I understand the the microscope they're under. Played the game at the highest level, and this is going to be great. I can't wait to come down and see Please Dead do, Poet yeah. Society. Jason, always good to see you. Nice to see you too. Thanks very much. And by the way, Dead Poet Society currently running through December 18th at the Classic Stage Company right here in New York. Hello, today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there, and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.